Hello, Sean. How's it going? Looks like we got five people in here. And uh, yeah, welcome to my first uh, sort of live streaming photography session. I don't know if this will work or not, but figured it's worth a shot. And uh, yeah, so right now, got this beautiful sea stack right there. And I'm just trying to position it right in the center, although I might off-center it because the sun is setting right here. Let me know how the quality is going and feel free to ask any questions if you want. You know, this is looking pretty good as a, as a short shutter speed. So right now I've got uh, 1 50th of a second, F9, and then ISO uh, 100. But I might throw on a filter real quick. Here, let me, uh, now that we got some people in here, let me go ahead and uh, flip the camera and say hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, live stream. I've never done this before. I have no idea if it's gonna work. It could be a failure or it could be awesome. We're gonna find out, but uh, I appreciate uh, you guys joining. Should be fun. <laughs> hey, guys. And uh, I can see the live chat right here, so I can respond to any of your questions. Feel free to ask me any questions, even if it's not related to uh, the seascapes and whatnot. Okay. So right here, I've got a filter kit, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw an ND on my camera so that I can do a long exposure here. And uh, right now I've been using the Case Magnetic Filter Systems, which work pretty good. They are uh, really nice. Let's see here. I think I need an ND64 here. Oh, lens. So I'm using the 16 to 35 uh, Zeiss F4 right now to get this wide perspective. And I'm at about 35 millimeters here too. All right, let me throw that filter right on top. And see here okay now we're really able to get a good uh good exposure there there's a one second shutter speed so let's try that um let's see sorry i think i missed some of your questions <laughs> i think i saw one that was like what's your favorite breakfast and uh my favorite breakfast is greek yogurt and coffee which is about the most boring answer that you can imagine but you know that's uh that's what it is let's see how that long exposure turned out i think a little bit of motion is nice there and i actually really like the sun over here on the left side i think i'm gonna try and change my uh, f-stop to f16 and then i'm gonna try an even longer exposure so there's about four seconds let's try that uh, as far as foreground rocks i'm pretty far away from any foreground rocks so i'm just trying to I'm just trying to get a nice clean composition with the water. So let's try this. Let's see what this looks like now. Nice bit of motion going on. I kind of like that. I'm going to have to exposure bracket this too. Hey, thanks, Nancy. I appreciate that. So when I exposure bracket, I'm always using my shutter speed because I find that's the, uh, the best way to do it. If you use the uh, aperture instead of the shutter speed, you end up getting some weird um, focus breathing in the shots a lot of the times. All right, you know what? Should we try a really long exposure? What do you guys think? Should we try like a 30 second exposure of this? And then I'll move on to a different composition. We'll try something else. I see the sun coming out right there too, which is kind of nice. Hmm. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna try the long exposure, why not? So I'm gonna throw on another filter. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What do I need for this? ND, let's see. Oh my gosh, my filters are so dirty. I should have cleaned them before doing this. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to put on another filter. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh wait, no, this is the wrong one. This is what happens when you do things live. You end up messing it up. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to get the filter off. 
ND8, CPL. Oh, here we go. This is the right one. So this is an ND1000. Uh, so it's a 10 stop filter. Let's try this. All right, look at that. It makes it pitch black. <laughs> okay, 30 seconds. I probably didn't need both filters. I'll just do one. There we go. There we go. That's perfect. Okay. All right, 30 second exposure. Let's see how this turns out. And I think I'm going to have to go to manual focus because um, it's too dark for the lens to focus by itself. So I'm going to zoom in here and just do a manual focus. I always find that infinity is never at infinity. I don't know if you guys also find that too. Probably should have done a timer, but let's just see how this turns out. Uh, polarizer. I use a polarizer from time to time. Um, I probably used to use it more, but you know, it's really nice when you want to cut off or cut out haze. So I really like it for that. But, um, yeah, I, I'd say like one out of every 10 times I go shoot, I use a polarizer, something like that. Here, let me uh, move the uh, camera a bit. Let's do a different angle here. There we go. Nice. Hey, Diego, I do have a new tutorial coming out soon. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. Ooh, look at that. You guys see that? Hold on, I'll zoom in. Look at that. It's a nice, nice crispy, uh, or nice smooth long exposure right there. <laughs> I think I'm going to try something different now. So you can see there's also a C stack right there on the right side. And I can include both in my composition if I angle the camera. So if I angle the camera here, I'm going to take the filters off. Bump my shutter speed down. And then zoom out. You can see I can start to include that rock. So I figure that would be a fun one to try. something like that to really balance out the composition but I think if I'm gonna do this composition I'd probably want to crop out a bit of the uh, sky something like that so let's see here let's do a darker exposure a little brighter yeah, a little brighter just for fun nice cool I'm going to do something a little different now. So, uh, we can go ahead and try like a different composition here. There's actually another angle facing south, which we can use the uh, telephoto lens with. It can get some really nice wave action. So, you know, that could be really nice. Let's see, how do I record my POV style videos? I use a GoPro attached to a chest mount. So, and then I have a little mic that, that goes up right here. I think I like the composition with just the rock right in the center instead of including that one on the right side. So we're going to go ahead and move real quick to another position. Today, 
do for do. It's my friend James oh. shooting. Getting cool stuff. All right. Here, let me turn this around, show you what we got here. Check that out. I love the coastline here. Ooh, greetings from San Diego, my hometown. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So what I love here is you get the reflected light on the water and the clouds actually look really nice right now too. So I think I'm gonna try that. Um, I'm gonna need to switch my lenses real fast. So I'll switch to the, I'm thinking I'll switch to the 100 to 400 lens. Hey Gavin, how's it going? Adventures of J and K, do I sell prints? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I'd, I sell like one or two a month, something like that. I don't really advertise it too much. All right, so we're gonna use this guy. Sigma 100 to 400, bada bing, bada boom. If you watch the videos, you've seen it many times and you know it's my favorite lens. So I'm gonna throw that on the camera and then show you what we're working with composition wise. Feel free if you have any questions like outside of what I'm doing here, you know, you just wanna know anything about photography or whatever, happy to answer, just let me know. Okay. Let's see here, all right. The lens is mounted on the camera and ready to go. Have I compared the Sigma to any other brands? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I've used the Sony one before. It's okay. Um, I just like the Sigma one because it was cheaper, to be honest with you. Uh, would I ever move from California? Maybe. I don't know. I've lived here all my life, though, so it's kind of weird. Uh, the photography tutorial I'm putting out is actually, <laughs> funny enough, it's about mobile photography, so it's like with my phone, so it'll be a little different to be honest with you, but you know, it should be fun. I'm excited for it. Um, and then I'll probably release another like Photoshop tutorial this year too. Okay, we are ready to go. Sorry that took so long. There we go. No, 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 no. Should probably lower this tripod so you can see what my camera's shooting. Okay, there we go. Is that better? <laughs> Sorry for the shakiness. There we go. Boom. All right. So you can see with the uh, telephoto lens, I'm really able to zoom in on that coast. There's a surfer coming out of the water right there. Pretty cool. But you can get really abstract with this. Like if you're on the coast and you have a lens like this, you can isolate out the sky and just focus on the textures in the water. It's really, really cool. Let's try that now. So right now I'm at almost 100 millimeters, but if I zoom in here, like really zoom in, get some interesting stuff there's a surfer coming out of the water another one look at the crowds out there too make sure we're in focus I think I'm gonna have to do a timer here or bump the ISO I'm gonna try and bump the ISO there we go there we go, that's looking better. That's uh, looking much better. 160. Oh, there's a dog. Oh no, get the dog. <laughs> <laughs> a 
little blurry. I think we're gonna have to do a timer for this. And then I'm gonna turn off the image stabilization. Gotta turn off the image stabilization. You know, this could be really nice as a long exposure though. So we might have to try that too. All right. Timer for two seconds should be good. And let's just try this real fast. Okay. Ah, it's gonna be too windy. There's too much of a breeze right now to do the short interval uh, exposures. So I think it, well, let's see. I could probably get the camera lower if it if the wind continues. Let's try this one more time. Let me try and refocus. Ah, that's better. I think I was just out of focus. <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm like, it's too windy. I can't get the shot. And really, I just didn't focus the camera properly. Uh, it's so funny. There's a, I don't know if you can see, like out there in the distance, let's zoom in on them. There's like some people biking or something. What are they doing? Eh, riding their bikes on the beach. Look at that. It's kind of cool. That'd be a fun activity to do. What's my opinion on ProMist filters? Uh, they're really great for video. I love them for video. I personally wouldn't use them for photography though, because I feel like you can achieve the look in post with a bit of Orton glow. Nice. Oh man. Love that reflected glow out there. Let's zoom out. I'm just going to get a nice shot of the coast now with the mountains in the background, I think. Probably something like that could be nice. Let me refocus, make sure we're properly in focus. Nice. Have I tried the Tamron 35 to 150? Uh, no, I haven't, but I actually have the uh, Tamron 28 to 200, uh, and I like it a lot so far. I'm probably gonna have a video on that soon. You know what I'm, I'm noticing out in the distance? There's some really cool waves. So I think we're gonna try and maybe shoot the waves now, just the waves, like no land. I just love the reflected light in here. I'm not sure if I'm able to capture it right now. Uh, can you ex please explain why F5 uh, 6.3 and why ISO 400? Because I'm trying to get my shutter speed as, as uh, high as possible right now. Because I don't want to do a long exposure. Because you got to remember if I'm trying to do like a telephoto shot at 400 millimeters, it's very easy to get motion blur in the shot. Like even this might show some motion blur. I gotta refocus the camera though. But if I wanna do a long exposure, I'll change the settings. Um, I think that's actually a really good thing to bring up. So, I, and I think it's a possible video I'll make in the future about, um, like I shoot, I'd say 50% of my landscape photography on ISO 400. And I think that makes some photographers cringe because they, you know, you figure you're going to get more noise. But on most newer cameras, the difference between ISO 400 and 100 is so negligible, it really doesn't matter. And using the ISO and pushing it for different shots um, is so beneficial. It's like such a helpful tool to make sure you get like a good image, especially if you're shooting handheld or you're trying to get your shutter speed up. So, you know, don't be afraid to push your ISO even higher than 400, but honestly, 100 to 400, you're probably gonna be fine. I think I'm gonna try a uh, long exposure here though. So I'm gonna bump my ISO down. Now I'm gonna push 
F11, and now I can go into long exposure territory. Okay, so that's a really, ah, that was too quick. We need to go even longer. So I'm gonna get my filters out again. Let's see here, this one is an ND64. Oh, you know what, I need to put a filter on there too. Uh, can I talk about focus? Um, yeah, so right now I'm just focused on infinity because everything I'm shooting is out there in the distance. So I don't need to worry too much about focus. I just need to make sure that if I zoom on in here, it's nice and clean and then I'm good to go. Just give me one second. get out my uh, lens mount real quick. All right, there we go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Now we can really do a long exposure. Although honestly, it's getting windier. I'm sure you can hear it in the uh, camera, so I'm not really sure if this is going to work. Hello from Montreal. Hello, sir. My dad's from Montreal. All right. Okay. Sorry about the plane noises. Hold on. I got to focus this camera once more. There we go. As I change the composition. Okay, there we go. Let's try this. Six seconds. Let's see how it looks. Ooh, look at that. A little bit of blur. Kind of like that. Flip this now. Oh, sorry, I'm using uh, manual mode right now. Uh, verify my exposure using the histogram? Uh, uh, occasionally, but for scenes like this where I'm not shooting a bunch of dynamic range, like with, you know, right into the sun with a wide angle, um, I don't really need to in most cases. Hmm. I kind of like including some of the mountain out there in the distance, but I feel like we're getting too much ground here. So I'm going to angle the camera up slightly. All right, there we go. Refocus. Hope you all are having a wonderful day and or night. See how this turns out, this long exposure. It's probably too windy for this, honestly. <laughs> it's probably way too windy. Ooh, watching from Australia. Nice. It's looking interesting. Maybe a wider shot would work. Do you use hyperfocal distance when focusing? Uh, I do not, I do not. I pretty much just focus on infinity or on the foreground or you know wherever I want to be the sharpest. And um, if I need to get more things in focus, I'll push the f-stop, like go to like f-16. Or in the case where I'm shooting something really close to the camera with the wide angle lens and I need to go all the way to infinity, I will focus stack. So, you know, hyperfocal distance is just, it's too complicated to try and do on the fly, in my opinion. It's just, I'd rather just like, you know, bump the camera to F16.
Hello from Malaysia. Hello. Hello, hello. How long have I been doing photography for? And how did you get started? Um, yeah, so I got started back when I was in high school and, uh, you know, kind of did like a darkroom class way back then and just fell in love with it and then pretty much did it every day since. And uh, yeah, it's been an interesting journey so far, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, I don't know how I ended up becoming a landscape photographer. That was kind of weird. Look at the reflected light out there. Look at the, the nice oranges right here. It's really pretty. Although my camera's not level. Gotta level it. There we go. That's level now. <laughs> here, I'm gonna pop up the live chat real quick. How do I pop it back up? Sorry if I'm missing your questions. Uh, do we use CPL or ND? Uh, I'm using an ND right now, I believe, to do the long exposures I was doing previously. Um, but I would use a CPL if I wanted to get more richness in the sky. Uh, let's see. I have not done any shooting in Idaho. I would like to, though. Uh, what allows me to shift the camera horizontal to vertical so easily? Uh, let me show you real quick and then I'll move the camera back. It's this guy right there. So it's this little lens mount and I pull this collar and then I can rotate the camera and it also changes the, uh, the weight distribution. So it's really handy when you have a really heavy lens on a camera. I'm gonna try and do another long exposure here. Got that timer going. Let's see how this turns out. Hmm, beginner macro lens. I wish I did, I don't. Hey David, my dad's doing great. Thanks for asking, I appreciate that. Uh, for anyone who's here who didn't know he's had some pretty big medical issues uh, in 2021 and he's in full recovery and it's the most amazing thing uh, ever. I'm really like, it's, it's insane. Uh, Sigma 100 to 400 versus Sony. Uh, the Sony's probably a touch sharper, but it's way more expensive and it's bigger. The Sigma does a great job though. So personally, I'd go with the Sigma because you're just gonna save some money. I'm going to take the filter off here. There we go. All right, so that's without the filter. Let's try and do uh, maybe another short exposure. Favorite coffee table books. Uh, let's see, favorite coffee table books. Uh, my friend TJ just released a book, which is fantastic. TJ Thorne, check him out. Uh, William Neal has some amazing photography books to check out. Uh, Eric Bennett has a fantastic landscape photography book. Uh, let's see, oh, there's so many. There's too many to name. Those are three to start with though. Have I tried a Loxia lens? I have not. Average editing time per photo. Oh boy. Like five to 10 hours, usually. Usually five to 10, but it's not like, like that time isn't spent like really doing heavy edits. It's just like very, very minor tweaks. You know what I mean? It's just like tweaking colors back and forth and things like that. Let's try and push to ISO 1600 real quick. Not 
let's see. Any chance coming down to LA to make a video? Sure, that'd be fun. Do you usually use grad NDs? I do not. I find it just easier to do a multiple exposure and do it in Photoshop. Out here in Texas, sunset happened two hours ago. Isn't that weird? The, the concept of like us being on earth and you know seeing sunsets and sunrises at different times is just insane. Uh, it looks like I missed the other questions. Damn, this chat, uh, this chat like disappears so quickly. Uh, why f5.6 not f8? Because I'm trying to get my shutter speed as high as possible. I think there's two two misconceptions. Uh, if I can, if you can get anything from this video, there's two misconceptions that people have about photography. One, you do not always need to shoot like f8, f11 to get a sharp image. It is totally okay to use a lens at its, its lowest aperture. Like if you need to get your shutter speed much higher and you, and you need to, you know, bump your ISO, get your f-stop a little lower, and then you can meet the shutter speed that you need to. And then the second thing is do not be afraid to bump your ISO. Don't always keep your ISO at 100. It is totally okay to do, you know, ISO 400 or even much higher if you're shooting uh, at night. So, you know, don't be afraid of those two things. It very much depends on the lens as well. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I guess if you're, like, even even the lenses I'm using, like, they're not super high-end lenses in comparison to, like, you know, for example, if you get a Sony 100 to 400 or, like, a really high-end one, they're going to be quite expensive. This Sigma was quite reasonable, but it's it's really sharp at f5.6. The, the lowest aperture is great on this lens, so, you know. Yeah, just don't be afraid of it, um, but definitely test your lenses. Like, if you're using just a kit lens, maybe you need to test it out to see how sharp it is at... You know, like for, for example, some lenses that are like really low, like they go down to f 1.4, but they're like a cheap lens. <laughs> they might be, they might be really soft at 1.4. It really depends. Uh, let's see. Still doing lots of time lapse or more landscape. I'd say I'm doing more landscape. The time lapses are just so time consuming. Yeah. Should we take a look at, uh, here, I'll move away from the camera real quick. I'll just take a look at the ocean real fast, see how that's looking. Look at that view. That's yeah, just beautiful. Can't go wrong with a nice ocean view. Uh, did I have to buy the tripod collar separately? Yes, I did. Uh, it was on Amazon for like 15, 20 bucks though. So pretty reasonable. I'm here by the coast in SF. Thought the sunset was gonna be good. Wasn't as dramatic as I thought. Yeah, it could have been better. Um, but you know, it's always nice to be out. That's the way I think about it. Like you're out at the beach, nothing wrong with that. Uh, did you start out photography career by selling prints? Um, no, I started doing more like commercial jobs for time-lapse and photography. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Nice. All right. Any recommendation on camera backpack? I'm using the Shimoda bags and I really like it. Um, I've heard good things about the Atlas pack too. Have I ever get, gotten any shots of the sunset over the ocean with Jupiter and Venus pick, uh, peeking out? Uh, honestly, I'm sure I have, but maybe just didn't know it at the time. <laughs> That's probably a bad answer. Got here too late. Is that town down there? Uh, so down there, this is all Ocean Beach right here. And um, this right here is Pacifica, like down in the distance. Um, so this would be the uh, Sunset District of San Francisco. Here, should we take a look at the other, the other rock? Let's get, let's get a different view. We've been looking at this too long. Let's, let's try something else. Let's take a look over here. Let's see what we got. There we go. Might be worth doing one more long exposure of this rock. May have to try that. Would you? 
you consider moving to the Pacific Northwest? Yeah, I think so. It's a beautiful area, but you know, I'm pretty happy in San Francisco right now. I do like it here. Look at the boat out there in the distance. Like a giant, giant boat right there. And actually, if I pan the camera, check. Oh wait, no, there's two coming in. There's that, that one and that one. All right, I think I'm gonna switch to, I think I'm gonna switch to the uh, wide lens real quick. With that lens, should I be concerned breaking the lens slash camera mount if not using a collar? No, I wouldn't be concerned about breaking the lens, but you're gonna get blurry shots because the center of like the balance uh, of your camera versus the lens is gonna be really off. Um, yeah. When did you teach photography with a group? Ba, 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 ba. Let's see. I have taught photography um, out in Death Valley uh, like two weeks ago with a workshop. That was super fun, but I haven't really done it like a ton this year, to be honest. Do you have a good way of determining sunset uh, will be good? I mean, you can look at the clouds, the weather. Uh, best app is probably windy.com. Yeah, really like windy. Uh, it's probably my favorite. Pulled the trigger on the Sigma 100 to 400 and really digging it. Thanks for showing it off in the videos. Always dig your videos. Appreciate that. Uh, do you still use Nikon? Uh, what made you move to Sony? Uh, yeah. So I did move to Sony and uh, mainly because of weight. That was like the biggest thing. And at the time the Z series wasn't even out. I just wanted like a really lightweight system. <laughs> I've commented on your videos that you have a good voice for ASMR. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, PhotoPills is also a good app. Uh, uh, PhotoPills, you can't check the weather though. It's not a weather app. It's more of a planning app for like, you know, seeing where the sun will set and, rise and the moon but uh, unless they've updated it with weather I'm not entirely sure Don't you guys all right I think I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna switch my lens do a little bit of a long exposure here I gotta switch the lens real fast here and try and do another long exposure on the end right here. Lumix camera. Camera set up right there. There we go. Yeah, we'll have to see how this goes with the wind, honestly. It's pretty windy. I know, I got a haircut. I gave myself a haircut. It looked really bad the first time. I had to do it twice. All right, let's try that. Nice five second exposure. Eh, 
yeah, you win some, you lose some with the haircuts, you know what I mean? Ooh, I like that. I like that long exposure. Oh, it's funny. Okay, let's try one more. We're gonna try one or two more long exposures here. All right, now we're doing a six second exposure F16 ISO 100. That's nice. Like the motion in there. I'm gonna do a darker exposure now. Uh, I don't think I can edit the replay to include the stills. I might just need to like post them on the channel when they're done uh, in the community page or something like that. A nice, nice little gradient in the sky there. It's not as bad as I, uh, I thought it was going to be. Well, I think sunset's almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'm going to start packing up and. Uh, I can answer any of your questions while I pack. So just let me know if you have any. Sorry for the weird camera angle. Uh, would I ever publi publish a photo book? Yeah, sure. Um, I haven't put like a lot of effort into it yet, but it's something I'd like to do in the future for sure. Uh, weather forecasting apps besides Windy? Um, let's see, uh, uh, NOAA for the U.S., so the national, like the, the, you know, government weather service is really good. Go to the hourlies. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, honestly, those are the two that I use, Windy and, and just the weather service. Radar scope. Radar scope is good if you want to get like storms and stuff like that. I don't know if I would use radar scope for just like a typical sunset shoot. <laughs> uh, any plans on visiting Hawaii? Yeah, I would love to. It'd be super fun. It's definitely on the list. Do you do much blending? How much time do you spend? Yeah, I, I do a ton of exposure blending, um, focus stacking. I spend hours and hours in Photoshop and Lightroom. Oops, sorry. Keep covering the chat. What skill level do you recommend for people attending workshops? Uh, any. It really doesn't matter. Uh, we've, I've had people that like have never used their camera before. And, you know, we go through like the exposure triangle and everything. But I've had people who like have no interest in even learning anything. They're just there to hang out and they want to, you know, hang out with other photographers. Uh, it, it is like a good motivation to get up for sunrise and things like that. What camera do you typically film your vlogs with? Uh, I use the Sony. Uh, A7S3. That's like my main camera for shooting video stuff. Uh, and then occasionally I'll use the A1 for, for video stuff too if I'm not using it for photography and things like that. What tripod am I currently using? I have uh, 
this this tripod is from the uh, Colorado Tripod Company. Works really well. Yeah. Let's see if there's any more questions coming in. Any more questions, guys? Nothing. Unless there's a lag to it. <laughs> Hey, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know if this was a success or not. You guys will have to tell me if this was good or not. Let's see. Well, I'll keep the chat going as long as I'm walking out. Look at that. Look at those, those clouds. Very nice. Oh, it's windy. Good ASMR. Nice. I keep getting the ASMR comment. Maybe I need to. St maybe that's the channel to do, right? It's like a trendy thing. ASMR. Let's do a little ASMR stuff. Oh, it's so much less windy down here. Let's see. Easy career switch. <laughs> What's your favorite focal length range? Um, it's kind of tough to say. I want to say 100 to 400 because I like the telephoto stuff, but part of me wants to say maybe, um, like, it's really tough. It really depends on what I'm shooting. I'd say telephoto is usually my favorite though. Do you provide in-person photography workshops? I do, yeah, group workshops. We've been doing, here, check this out. Ooh. Got the waves crashing. Like a nice down there. Kind of a bummer, uh, sunset didn't, you know, it wasn't quite as good as I thought it was gonna be, but, you know, you can only, you can only be out here, right? You come out here, if it's great, amazing. If it's not, at least you got out, you went for a walk, got to shoot some photography. So, you know. The waves are looking really big out there. Here, let me switch the camera and show you real fast. Look at that. Wow. There's some waves crashing out there in the distance. So right now we're looking north. So you can see all the way out there, you can see Point Reyes. And then out here, that'd be like Stinston Beach. Over here is Mount Tam, Marin Headlands. This is my finger. Apparently the camera wants to focus on it. This is uh, Ocean Beach area that I'm at right now. This is the Cliff House, which is uh, no longer no longer uh, operational. Oh no! When will I be visiting SD? Uh, let's see. Ooh, probably April. April. If I could only have... I'm surprised there's like almost more people watching now that I'm not shooting uh, sunset anymore. 
Uh, let's see, if you could only have one lens, 15 to 36 or 24 to 70, which would I choose? It's a good question. Uh, probably the 24 to 70. I feel like that's like a better mid-range lens to use. Best place in Western US to shoot for uh, four to five days of spring. Let's see, Western US. I mean, there's a million places. It's really tough to like give a good recommendation there. You know, I mean, there, it depends on if you want to go visit the beach or uh, if you want to like go, you know, to the desert. I mean, there, there's like so many great places. Uh, favorite shooting spot in SoCal? Oh my gosh, these are such tough questions because there's so many answers to all of them. Uh, Southern California, I don't know. I haven't been to Malibu in a while. I used to love the Malibu beaches a lot. Um, yeah, all right. Preferred time to visit Iceland? Probably the summer. I like the summertime. I just like all the green, you know? Uh, let's see, camera theft in San Francisco? Yeah, yeah, it's a problem. I don't really encounter it too much on the beach, to be honest, but it does happen. Yeah, I just don't shoot the city, really. All right. Do you have any uh, collaborations planned for the near future? Um, not any plan, but I'd love to go hang out with Photo Tripper, Gavin again. Go do more of that stuff. I'm just putting one of my tripods away. Greetings from Scotland. Am I gonna move up to MF? MF. What's MF? I'm not sure what that is. Oh my gosh. Hello from New Zealand. Oh my gosh. See, that's a place you want to go visit. New Zealand. It's like one of the best places in the world. Let's see. HDR blend in Lightroom. How many exposures would you say are ideal? And do you prefer manual or auto exposure bracketing? Um, not really sure. Uh, I use HDR blend in, in Lightroom on occasion. I'd say like, I don't know, usually three exposures is pretty good, I'd say. I don't think you need much more than that. Um, and then I usually do manual bracketing. <laughs> Sorry, it's tough to answer the questions in like a walk. I'm walking to my car right now. Let's see here. Medium format. Oh, medium format. Oh, I'm an idiot. Sorry. I should have gotten that like right away. Um, I don't know, maybe in the near future, like maybe this year. The problem is the how expensive film is right now. It makes me not want to do it. You know what I mean? It's just like so expensive. Uh, Milky Way. Yeah, in the summertime. Could be good. A little Milky Way action. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to end this. And uh, yeah, you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate you. See you in the next video.